hi, I'm Kay Choi. Welcome to my channel. As you might know, I lived in London for a year getting my master's degree, and I also lived in Bristol, England for five months uh, studying abroad during college. And during those times of my life, I was able to see a lot of different places in Europe, and I always get asked where to go. Now, I've only been to these European cities as a tourist myself and have really done the touristy things that most people will know about already, but there are still a few spots that I thought were worth highlighting and um, in case you are planning a Europe trip of some sorts, then hopefully, you know, these cities that I've hit up will be on your itinerary as well and you can just make note of them. So this is not going to be a comprehensive guide of any sorts um, in terms of what to go do and see in Europe, but they're just things that stood out to me and that I would recommend you to uh, pull out um, of the itinerary and really try to make an effort to go see. I'll be hitting 10 cities in this video with just one or two spots in each one and those cities will be Berlin, Prague, Vienna, Amsterdam, Budapest, Paris, Lisbon, Split, Zagreb and Ljubljana. For Berlin, I would recommend the Markthal Noon. I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's a market hall. It's a covered market and there's food vendors from all over the city with all different types of cuisines. I remember it being a short walk from the um, East Side Gallery in Berlin. So if you're around that area, then that could be a convenient place to stop by. I love covered markets in almost every city that I go to and it's a great way to try different foods and if you're going with friends, you can each get something different and try each other's. I would also recommend the German Historical Museum because it just encompasses all of German history, so it's a very interesting place with lots and lots to look at. The architecture there was really nice, and I remember the tickets for students or youth was only maybe four euros, which is really reasonable for a museum. Moving on to Prague, which is just like a four-hour train journey from Berlin, I would recommend Lokal, which is this restaurant that was recommended to me by um, a local. It was actually my Airbnb host. There they have traditional Czech food that is pretty affordably priced when you compare it to some of the restaurants in more touristy areas, but the food quality is much better. The ambiance is very cool. It's in a kind of warehouse type of feel, but it still feels very cozy somehow. And there are like wooden tables and it all feels very rustic. I would also recommend that you walk on the Charles bridge at sunset because the colors of the sunset reflecting on the river is just really beautiful and Charles Bridge itself is one of the main sites in Prague and it really is a really cool bridge. I said really so many times right now. Moving on to Vienna, I would recommend the Nashmarkt, which is another market. This one is outdoor and they do have um, like food restaurant vendors there, but they also have um, general like local farmers produce and they have crafts and other types of souvenirs that you can pick up and take back home. There was a place there called Dr. Falafel. I don't know if it's still around, but I had it like three times when I visited Vienna for just three nights. So um, if you are there, then uh, try Dr. Falafel and let me know if it's good. I would also recommend the Belvedere Palace because that is where they have a really, really large Gustav Klimt collection, who is my favorite artist. And if he is also one of your favorite artists, then that is the place to go. For Amsterdam, I would recommend this market. I have no idea how to pronounce the second part of it, so I'm just gonna put it there. And that again is another market. This one is like completely outside. It just takes over a street and the people, the vendors set up their tents and everything. And there was a Stroopwafel place there that is really, really good. There is one that's called the original Stroopwafel, which has like its own little van or truck. But when I went there, they weren't open. So I went to one that was just on the street that was open and it was so good. So, I mean, wherever you go, I'm sure they're delicious delicious, but just make sure you try a fresh Stroopwafel, not the ones that are packaged, which are also great, but just having it made fresh for you is so delicious. I also really enjoyed the Rijksmuseum. I didn't get a chance to go to any other museums like the Van Gogh Museum or to um, the Anne Frank House. The Anne Frank House is really, really difficult to get tickets to because uh, people line up from like, I don't know, how early in the morning or you have to like get your tickets way in advance online. So if you're unable to go to the Anne Frank house because of time restraints, then I do recommend the Rijksmuseum. Not that you'll get the same thing there, but just if you are looking for that kind of historical aspect of your itinerary. In Budapest, or Budapest, um, I would recommend the Sejeni Bathhouse. 
I don't know how to pronounce it, I'm sorry. Budapest is the bath and spa capital of the world, so I think one of the things you have to do when you're there is go to a bathhouse. I went there with my friends for like four or five hours. We spent like the whole day there and it's just so relaxing. That particular bathhouse is a pretty popular and famous one and there are different thermal pools, um, all like man-made, you know, like they're all like marble and tile pools, but the water temperatures are different. They also have saunas, you get a massage. Um, yeah, you honestly could just like spend a whole day there pampering yourself, so I really recommend you do that. I also recommend the House of Terror, which is a museum in Budapest, and the building that it is in used to be the headquarters of like the Nazis and the Soviets, I believe. Now it's filled with artifacts and it's a very, very sad museum, but you learn a lot and it's very captivating just like seeing what this city has gone through and I really didn't know like any of that history. I don't know much about Hungarian history so it was very eye-opening to learn about it that way. Let's go on to Paris now. I'm kind of moving all over the place, I'm sorry, but um, in Paris one of my favorite areas is Montmartre which is just like a district in Paris. It's where the Sacré-Cœur Basilica is and it's kind of like in a hilltop area of the city and there is where a lot of artists and writers would spend their time time in the 20s, so you kind of still have that creative feel there. I just love walking around that area and there's a bakery called Coquelicot which has um, really good almond croissants and other baked goods that you should check out. I also like the Royal Palace Gardens or the Jardin de Palais Royal. <laughs> I butchered it, I'm sorry, um, but it's like this outdoor garden area and they have these cool um, like pillars that people like to stand on and take pictures on. There's a fountain where people can sit around and some cafes and shops um, circling or like on the perimeter of the garden. This was a place that my friend Claire had taken us to when um, Joan and I were visiting Paris and I ended up taking my mom there after that and I ended up taking another friend there when I went to Paris a couple of other times. So yeah, it's become a favorite spot of mine. So thank you, Claire, for that recommendation. In Florence, I would recommend the Piazza de Michelangelo. So that is this hilltop plaza that overlooks the river and the city of Florence. You could see the Duomo from there. You can see the Ponte Vecchio, which is a famous bridge. It's just a beautiful location. It's great to go there at sunset to see the sun set, <laughs> but also to see all the shop lights turn on and it just kind of glitters um, on the river and it's so beautiful. And I would also recommend the Central Market in Florence, which again is a covered market with food vendors. Uh, the food I had there was really good, really fresh, and pretty affordable, so I would recommend that. Moving on to Lisbon, I would recommend taking a day trip from Lisbon to Sintra or Sintra, I don't know. There are a ton of different things to do there. I did do a vlog of when I took a day trip there, so I will link that up there if you want more detail, but out of those places in Sintra, I would recommend the Quinta da Regalera. All these places are so hard to pronounce, but it's this uh, former estate that is now like a public park kind of thing. You pay admission to get in and there are caves and ponds and really cool buildings and it's just a really fun place to explore. Moving on to Split Croatia. I was only there for one night, um, so I didn't get to see that much, but honestly just walking around you will be able to see a lot and one of the things I recommend is there's this clock tower. The city's pretty small so I'm sure you would be able to find it, but there's a clock tower so if you go up that then you could get a really nice view of Split Split, um, which I always love to do in any city that I go to. So I have a vlog from that day actually, so I will link it up there or in the description box. And in the description box for every city, if I have a vlog of some sorts, then I will link it so that you can see um, everything in more detail if you want. In Zagreb, I would recommend this restaurant called Agava and they have the most delicious focaccia bread there. It is on the more expensive side, um, the restaurant, but if you're coming from maybe the States or the UK, then um, the amount and like the quality of food you get is a pretty good deal um, compared to what you might get in London, for example. And I found Croatian cuisine to be really, really interesting and good because they're near Italy, so you have that Mediterranean influence but they're also kind of near like around Eastern Europe so you get that influence as well and it combines into something really 
cozy and comforting. Finally, for Ljubljana, I actually have two places that are not in Ljubljana, Slovenia, but they are places that you can take a day trip to. Um, so the first one is Lake Bled or Lake Blade, which I think is how it's pronounced over there. Um, and it is a gorgeous, gorgeous lake. It's like so blue. I couldn't believe how blue it was. Um, you can either take a bus or you can book um, a shuttle and I will leave a link for that shuttle company below. I recommend going there when it's sunny so that you can go swimming. There are some spots where you can't go swimming, but you would see like when you're there, you can see some docks where people would be jumping off of um, and swimming in the lake. And they also have like Lidos or Lidos, which are like enclosed pool-like areas that um, the lake water flows through, uh, but those you would have to pay money to go into. And when you're there, um, that area of Slovenia is known for this um, like custard cream cake. I'm sure you would see pictures of it at any restaurant when you're there, so try that because it is a local thing there. And the other place I would recommend is Socha Valley, which is maybe a bit longer of a journey from Ljubljana, maybe like two hours or so. Over there they have this beautiful aquamarine river. Again, I couldn't believe the color of the river like when I saw it. It was also an area where part of World War One was fought, so when you are hiking um, through Socha Valley you would see some different bunkers and there's also a World War Two World War One museum um, in like the main town area. You could go whitewater rafting and they have other activities there that are really fun if you are into outdoorsy things. That is it for for this video. I hope it was helpful to you. Again, I only pulled out one or two spots in each of the cities that I mentioned. Um, there are definitely other places that I would recommend, but I thought I would just highlight a couple because I find that it's sometimes very overwhelming to get too many recommendations when I'm planning an itinerary. So I like to just know the one or two things that really stood out to a person. So that is what I have shared with you. Please let me know what your favorite spots are in any of the cities that I listed, and I will see you in tomorrow's video. Bye!